Let's talk about catalyst fouling. So catalysts are present on most modern day vehicles and the purpose behind them is to take you know, relatively what we might call harmful emissions, things like NOx and carbon monoxide, pass them through a catalyst and we get nitrogen and carbon dioxide, which is relatively inert. Obviously carbon dioxide has its own problems with greenhouse gas emissions, blah, blah, blah. But compared with carbon monoxide, it's not nearly as toxic. So that's the purpose behind them. Now, if you peel back the layers on a catalyst, and I'm no expert on catalyst production or performance or anything like that, but generally they all follow a, a roughly similar pattern. So you have this cerium ceramic honeycomb, which is kind of impregnated with rare earth stabilizers, things like platinum, palladium, and rhodium. Now, platinum and palladium and rhodium are used in many different uh, chemical reactions. They're often used as a catalyst, for example, in chemistry labs. So it's no surprise to see them here uh, in a catalyst which is designed for gases. Now, what is the purpose in this ceramic honeycomb? Well, the purpose behind it is really to maximize the catalyst surface area, right? So within this relatively small package, you want to have as much platinum, palladium, and rhodium exposed to the exhaust gases as possible. So that's why they come up with this honeycomb structure. Now, famously, we have a problem when it comes to ZDDP. And the reason for this is predominantly got to do with both the sulfur and the phosphorus in the ZDDP, ZDDP molecule. So what these do is these are designed to be surface active. The whole point of ZDDP is it's supposed to bond to metal surfaces where it forms a polyphosphate film that is you know, sacrificial. So it means that the two metal surfaces won't wear on each other. What this means though, is that it's not just reactive in machining surfaces. It's also very reactive when it comes to catalyst metals as well, right? So over time, what you effectively get is what we call catalyst poisoning, where the surface of the catalyst is covered in the phosphorus and the sulfur. So what this means is if I have a carbon monoxide molecule that is seeking to you know, um, react or, or um, have the catalyst get involved in the reaction with carbon monoxide, then it's unable to find a, a physical location to do so. And therefore it passes through the exhaust and with, it does so without reacting. And this is what we call catalyst fouling. Now catalyst fouling is not in and of itself necessarily a terrible thing. We expect catalyst fouling to gradually take place over time. What we are concerned with is what we call excessive catalyst fouling, which greatly shortens the life of the catalyst. Now, remember, in a, uh, you know, a PCMO segment, so remember that engine oils are a little bit unique in that they occupy both a consumer as well as a commercial category, right? So in the consumer space, what we are expecting is that consumers don't have giant maintenance teams that they have available to them. They want components on the car to last the life of the car. We don't expect to have to change our catalysts on a regular basis. And that's why catalyst fouling has become such an important issue as we try and balance lack of maintenance on the part of the consumer as well as clean exhausts, right? So that's the, the sort of the balance that we're trying to strike. And that's why, um, you know, we're reducing ZDDP in oil formulations. Now, wh what does this have to do with the oil? Now, if we backtrack from the catalyst, we go back through the exhaust system we make our way back to the exhaust part of the engine. So everything basically comes from the combustion chamber, right? So all the exhaust gases have to have originated from that combustion chamber. And what's in that combustion chamber? There's fuel, there's air, and there's oil. And that's pretty much it. So if we have poisoned a catalyst, one of these three has to be the culprit. Now, there is some sulfur in both fuel and oil, right? So fuel sometimes contains uh, sulfur, particularly with uh, diesel, and we've reduced the amount of allowable sulfur in diesel to, to try and prevent this problem. We've also got some sulfur in the oil. So some of that might come from the base stock, right? So there is some sulfur, for example, in group ones, less so in group two and group three. Um, there is also gonna be some sulfur in the additives as well. So typically EP as well as anti-wear additives tend to be sulfur containing, both ZDDP as well as things like molybdenum dithiocarbamate. Now the other one, that is also within the oil tends to be phosphorus. So again, 
very common in anti-wear additives. Now, like I said, right, this isn't unique to ZDDP, right? Z, both ZDDP and molybdenum dithia carbamate do contain sulfur within them. And for that reason, in a lot of the new, let's say, um, oil specifications, such as the ASEA ones that I've got up here, then we have reduced the amount of allowable uh, sulfur and phosphorus. And we put limits on it to prevent this catalyst fouling. All right. Now, one of the other ways that we can um, get around this is to use different types of ZDDPs, right? So when you've got ZDDP, it's really a family of different molecules. So there's aryl and alkyl ZDDPs, and then you've got also primary and secondary ZDDPs. What we have found, right, or what is contained in some of the literature that I've read anyway, right, there's a little bit of debate on it, is that arils are slower to form anti-wear films, but primary ZDDPs tend to volatilize off quicker. So what does that mean? Well, it means that primary ZDDPs are more likely to end up in the exhaust, right? So if the ZDDP is on, for example, the, uh, the liner, it will tend to volatilize off, make its way into the exhaust gases and therefore poison the catalysts. So one that way that we can slow down uh, the rate of catalyst poisoning, right, is if we have fewer primary ZDDPs in the formulation, right, therefore we will have less ZDDP in the combustion chamber and therefore less in the exhaust.